everyone welcome to my november favorites so this month i have based my november favorites according to how i usually base it which is um colors that i tend to use most or enjoy using most but also i based it on a specific color palette that i have created a um just a bit of an abstract page here so i really really enjoy these colors and some of the colors um, have been lingering through the past few months especially the chartreuse green i'm not letting go of this color i have really really enjoyed it and so in this particular color palette i have themed it with um colors that are cool toned as well as warm toned and there's sort of this play in between and also the popping color is going to be this beautiful blue color and i just want it in the smallest amount sprinkled um, across so this is not a color i would be making dominant in this spread or this page um, but it's definitely a color that I find helps lifting all of these colors. It also sits beautifully next to chartreuse. So I am super organized today and um, we're going to go clockwise and we're going to start with a nice little selection of chartreuse green colors. There's going to be a couple new products here, I believe, and uh, I will talk you through them. Then we have the greys, blues and sort of like warm toned, mustardy, goldy type of colours. So that's how we're going to start swatching them out. So to begin with, um, let's start with um, a watercolour kind of type of a colour. Now these two half pans are coming from the Dervant Intense Paint Pan pocket set palette number two and I haven't had a chance to do a review on this but I was so excited to go into this color and try it first because this is my favorite color from the Sherbet Lemon or one of the favorites um, from the Dervant Ink Tensor. It's called Sherbet Lemon and uh, it's basically a water soluble pencil which is very intense in color love it and i have featured it i think in the previous uh, favorites possibly but i wanted to try it in this um, kind of like a watercolor or water soluble paint and these are not your typical watercolors these are very very intense just like the ink tense pencil so i was super excited and the other color I wanted to try with it because it works really beautifully is the Payne's Grey and I love this in combination. If I show you in this abstract you can see it behaves different to a traditional watercolor and it kind of has um, a different way of moving and um, kind of mixing into other colors when you do them wet into wet. And I really like it because the intensity is gorgeous, but we also get some interesting patterns as well. Um, watercolor kind of moves slightly different uh, because of the gum arabic and the other components. So basically that is that. So I try to use minimal water with these ink tans because you can see they're just like butter. And what, what I'm interested in is the intensity of it. So I'm going to do a super creamy mix oh my goodness it's stunning it is absolutely stunning maybe I'll do a bigger swatch gorgeous isn't it just gorgeous so next to it I will swatch the ink tents in the pencil form uh, just to show you that there is slight difference and <clears throat> of course you can use the pencil and uh, color wise they're very very similar if not the same thing but 
when it's a pencil you can drag it through wet watercolors and in fact this is what I've been doing here right there so it would mix in with a bit of color uh, pigment from the watercolor and it just creates these beautiful effects here I went across the watercolor this one is the paints gray uh, Durvant ink tense paints so you can do a bunch of things versus what we will look at, for instance, a Neo Color One, which repels the paint. So if you go over the Neo Color One with paint, it tends to repel it slightly, and you get these lovely effects. So although the colors are fairly similar, and they're definitely from the same um, color family. Uh, or color group, they, however, have different purposes. And so that's what I really like about having the same color in different, um, you know, in different art supplies. Now, in fact, I have a video, which I will link up here, up there, uh, where I am swatching all of my chartreuse um, colors in different mediums. So I'm sure you would find that interesting if you haven't seen it yet. So now I'm going to introduce water and what you will see is that there is a little bit of texture from the pencil that still remains. So slightly different effect and I went over here quite a few times and I'm still left with a bit of texture. I could move it a bit more if I wanted to or I could do less of that blending and end up with more texture. So um, it's, you know, it's different and I definitely appreciate both of these forms of the color. Now, next one, this is nice and easy. It has no need for any watercolor or, or rather water. It's water soluble. It's basically a wax crayon, so there is nothing in here to make the pigment move. And it just stays as it is. And like I just explained, it's great for repelling color. So if you wanted to do some doodles, go over with a lick of watercolor. That's what you can achieve with it. And then finally for my chartreuse. Love, I'm going to swatch this Molotov, which is poison green, I believe. Yes, it is poison green. So there we go. It's right here for us. And let's move on to grays. So our grays are going to be, let's see, I think I'm going to start with a cool gray or warm gray. Let's start with a warm gray. So this is a beige and this is a neo color too. So it is actually water soluble. So I'll show you in both dry form and water soluble. Absolutely love these little pastels. They're so much fun. I love their colors. They're, they don't feel like a kid's crayon because of the color choices. And a lot of artists like using them. Um, so just going to wash out my brush from all that chartreuse and this is basically the color we'll leave a little bit on the side there because you might want to use them dry as well and it does change the color quite a bit so you can see it goes lighter and milkier so you have two different colors basically well they're very similar but they're just uh, different texture and different look to it. So this one is the light grey, so it's like a blue toned grey. Very contemporary grey, I really like this grey, there's a lot of this colour in my house decor. I find it very calming. Now very close to this colour is actually this one here, so I want to swatch it next to it but anyway let's swatch it over here you'll see so 
and this probably was way too much. So now we're swatching the um, acrylic gouache by Holbein. So basically it's a hybrid paint where it can behave like a traditional gouache which means um, you can create watercolor effects uh, but also it dries permanently so once it dries you can't then uh, you know lift anything so if you like working in uh, different layers of paint without sort of having the mess of mixing two colors then that would be a good option so you could definitely create like a watercolor effect if you wanted it a bit more transparent uh, you could add some water and it would sort of you know um, move into the water similar to what watercolors um, similar to how the watercolor behaves but just uh, dry permanently so that's that and you can see they're very similar when they are um, so in the crayon form uh, rather than when it's watered out but when it dries it's also quite similar as well but yeah so next one we have is the Payne's Grey this is also Durbant Ink Tense paint Look at the intensity of this. It just is beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm thinking whether I should lift one corner just to reveal a bit more color, but I do like it in its most intensity. It's gorgeous. Okay, let's move on to the blues, and I guess we could, hmm, let me see, I'll start with this one. So this is the light blue, again, by Holbein Gouache. There is something about spreading or painting this paint onto paper. It feels like spreading butter on your toast. Very satisfying. Now let's move on to the Schminke Glacier Green. Now I have included it here because it sort of separates into these warm grays, almost like a maybe purpley. It's hard to describe this color with lovely blues. So it's sort of a bit of this, like a beige gray with some lighter turquoisey blues, which kind of works really well in this color palette. So here is the color and I might need to squeeze out a little bit more I could not not include it in this month's favorites because I have um, really enjoyed it and I'll just show you this couple of things. First of all, when I designed my latest um, swatch set, I used um, this color here on the back. And then it just carried on and I played more with it and these are the lovely mixes that I got with these colors and I think it's just really really interesting color here. So when you first kind of you know wet it and put it on the paper it doesn't maybe look too impressive but give it some time to just settle and dry and the granulation and the pigment separation starts very quickly and you can probably already see what's happening here and also look at the dish here 
definite pigment separation which is really really beautiful and so we have our blues done and let's move on to our warm tones so first of all there is misty green by again gouache i'm featuring one two three four colors this this month and really i could have included the designer <laughs> designer's gouache by windsor newton uh, with their linden green but i think it'd be just way too heavy on the um, chartreuse so i didn't want to give you a fifth chartreuse color but really I would love it um, as well. I mean, I love it. I would love to include it. So this is an interesting one. Very contemporary color. So if you're into calming, contemporary, limited color palettes, this is a good one. It's beautiful. It's like, like a beige that had a bit of... Um, green like a yeah like a touch of green added to it so it's um quite unique color and i find it says really well in this color palette okay another color that i wouldn't want to use too much of but i find it does work nicely and if you take it away it's almost like sort of being missed from here so I am including this color for sure. Uh, just a little bit of it. Again, I wouldn't want to overpower things, but I find it works in combination and it becomes a very harmonious kind of color palette. So I do like it. Now, this particular one, again, by Holbein gouache, acrylic gouache, olive. This particular one, I don't like using with water, so... It just kind of goes into a yucky yellow kind of orangey color, which I'm not a big fan of, but you might be. Um, so I prefer to really build up the color so we don't see this sort of orangey color coming through. I like it straight out of tube with minimal water in there, if I can. So there we go. And finally, as we are approaching the festive season, I am kind of enjoying throwing in a bit of sparkly colors. And this particular one is from, let me just get the palette so these are the fine tech colors and this one is the arabic gold so it's the most yellow gold in the palette and it's colero m600 which are handmade in germany they have a beautiful very wide range of all sorts of metallic colors which i have some but the most that i use are these ones they're gold selection so it, it's a nice bit of paint to add onto your what was it, Christmas cards if you're doing any, um, you know, that sort of a thing. So let me just do a bit of fun thing and just layer it over every medium just to see how it behaves, how it repels, how it sits. There is most repelling that I can already notice. So from the acrylic gouache, obviously, but even more so from the uh, Neo Color One. So that's obviously a pure wax. So you can see, I mean, it looks beautiful with every single color. And if you put it onto something very dark, you know, it really pops. It's gorgeous. Okay, so let me label everything. I'll give you a nice little close-up. I have to say, I'm absolutely loving this color arrangement as well as the textures here. Um, it really does make me feel really quite happy. One thing I'm thinking is 
Does the Sennelier Oil Stick come in a chartreuse green? Hmm, something I need to check out and I really hope they do because that would be another fun texture to add to this because it would be drying like an oil paint which means it would have that lovely texture that I wouldn't be able to achieve with other mediums. But anyway, something to check out. Absolutely love how this combo looks. There's just something really, really appealing. The gold with the mystic green. It just looks very contemporary. And yeah, absolutely loving all of them. So here's a little close up for you. I'll just move them a bit to see the reflection together with the colors. And then the bottom row. So let's quickly recap. We have, let me just zoom you in. So we have Durbant Ink Tense Paint in Sherbet Lemon, Durbant Ink Tense Pencil in Sherbet Lemon, Karen Dash Near Color One in Lemon Yellow. Then we have Molotov Poison Green, Karen Dash Neo Color One, both of these in Beige and Light Gray, Holbein Acrylic Gouache in Misty Blue, Durbant Ink Tense Paint again in paints grey, Holbein acrylic gouache, light blue, Schminke, Glacier, that's um, from their limited edition colours, these are super granulating and pigment separating, they didn't have anything like that in their range previously, but um, this is the sort of um, limited edition colours that they have still available, and the colour is Glacier Blue, Holbein Acrylic Gouache in Misty Green and Holbein Acrylic Gouache in Olive. And finally, it was Fine Tech Arabic Gold all across of these colors. So I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed it. And I want to go and create some more individual limited color palette um, art where I want to explore a couple of the combinations here with the gold, the specific yellow gold. Um, so I think that's what I may do. I might use this color with one of the colors from here and just make it really contemporary, really limited and see what I can get. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon.